Hi everyone, my name is Jason Berry and I'm Group Sales Director at Crystal Specialist Finance, but I'm also one of the co-founders of the Mojo Industry Mental Health Charter, which I'm very, very proud to be yet yeah, to be part of. And this is actually the third in um, a series of conversations that we're hosting um, called Keep the Conversation Going. And I'm joined today by someone who I feel I've known for, um, yeah, forever, um, certainly over 25 years, an industry veteran. Um, Pete William joins us from Virtus Search. And Pete, we're going to talk today about um, the importance of mental health and, 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 and well-being. It's something obviously I'm very passionate about and proud about um, to have the charter. I know similarly for yourself it's something that is uh always been a, a, a real focus for you that that health and well-being but can you just maybe just share why you decided to become a, a signatory of the of, of the charter and what maybe well-being means for you yeah jace uh i i i actually don't think i had hair when i first met you did i so uh <laughs> much the same but uh <laughs> i um i think it's a uh, Along with a number of initiatives I've seen the industry uh, rally around and uh, and support, I think my my understanding of the mental health continuum has grown exponentially in the last few years, and I uh, and I'm better for that. Period. The industry, in its own right, for having such an initiative, is better for that. Period. Why? Because. More often than not, mental health is inextricably linked to the anxiety and the stresses of everyday life and everyday life in general features workplaces. Uh, at least you can argue for those in workplaces, it gives them a purpose, but at the same time, it can also give them far more stresses and anxieties than those who are not in a workplace. But I think... In, 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 in trying to pull that into one succinct sentence, it's all around us all of the time. And I think physical uh, illnesses are so much easier to offer support and, 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 and um, uh, counsel and, and, and um, encouragement and motivation towards seeing the improvements in mental health. So, so much more layered um, and, Let's face it as well, you know, we talk about diversity and inclusivity, mental health is intersectional. It can happen to anyone, mm -hmm. anytime. You can then go on and say, if we really are caring about diversity and inclusivity, those people with protected characteristics, how much more does it happen for them than it does for a bald, fat, white bloke? You know, there's, there's a real importance, you know, on a personal level, yes, this matter resonates. I've I've seen, unfortunately, young young teenagers who've who've chosen to uh, um, you know take uh, take drastic steps because they've clearly been unable to process and deal with things, and 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 therefore, in my quest to be a better citizen, better person, better equipped. Um, to offer tools. I thought it was really important to support the initiative. I thought it was really important to go and take the mental health first aid um, course and, 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 and challenge myself to, to, to just be better. Mm. And, and, and look, this, the, you mentioned the you know, young men there. There's so many people who do suffer in, in silence. So just, just how important do you think is, is conversation and just unburdening oh. yourself? I, uh, if you've been on the MHFA first aid course, you'll 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 remember the diagram that they called the stress uh, container, I believe. And I think it is really really easy when you process it as as a simple container to understand that you can't keep filling a container without things spilling. And in the sense of um, why we we find ourselves almost tripping over this subject is because we've created so much stigma around it. We've, 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 we've typically being British had that stiff British upper lip mentality that the phrases such as man up and all those other things just, just don't help people 
feel vulnerable enough to be able to communicate and therefore there's a there's an onus there's an onus on those people who who, who are feeling mentally together to extend that hand of, of, of friendship that hand of, of support to say I'm going to converse with you I'm, I'm going to ask how you're feeling and I'm not going to ask it in a transitory way I'm going to ask how you really feeling mm, yeah and- um and it's it, it 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 really is humanity in a in in a very sort of simplistic way that the the modern society has as a sort of navy whizzed past some of the the basic principles of of humanity. Yeah, and and, and we've got a real cross section of of signatories within the charter now, which again I'm I'm, I'm really um you know delighted with and yeah. i know you know the, the majority of people will i suppose be companies where they're employing you know staff and you know all, all, all scales and i know i know yourself you don't necessarily have a, a a huge amount of staff that you actually employ but yet taking a mental health first aid course was still something that was really important to you as you've as you've said so this 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 importance of of well of, of well-being it's uh, again i'm just interested in just understanding what what drove you to take the first aid course and and without having the staff around you just what, what what the importance of well-being is for yourself well one of the one of the questions i ask in pretty much every single individual consultation i have is how much capacity do you feel you have for change it's a fundamental part of understanding where someone may or may not be on their career trajectory. And, and, and yeah. obviously there are then multiple follow-up routes off that opening question, but effectively you're, you're going to the, 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 the fundamental principle of what, where are you mentally? What, what's your capacity? What's where are, where are, are you in your stress container? Are you full? And, 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 and if you're full, is it full? For the right reasons or fall for the wrong reasons and how much more can you then take on without really overburdening yourself and taking yourself into a zone that isn't great for you or for your employer mm-hmm. um and i'm I, and i was just very very conscious in in terms of thinking of my skill set and my ability to offer value back to anyone i've opened such a conversation with is that I've got to be able to allow that to progress into a conversation about potentially mental health as much as I have it to go into a conversation about career management. I'm very skilled in the one respect. I was very underskilled, particularly now having been through the course, I realised how underskilled I was in in not necessarily being an empathetic guy, because I think I am, yeah. but, but just having the tools and the awareness of, of, of signposting and the significance of signposting to people who start to show they're in some kind of crisis. And I think it will make me a better professional, but I think, again, just on this, I want to be better. Yeah. Uh, well, I think it just makes me a better person, um, yeah. whether that be in and out of work, as a dad even, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you're right, look, that, that personal development never stops. We you know, we touched on and we joked, didn't we, earlier, how long we've known each other, how long we've been in this in this sector. But that personal development, that professional development never stops. We can always, you know, get better at, at, at things all, all, all the time. And as a sector, I mean, why do you think our sector has lag behind maybe other sectors? I know we've got friends who operate at high levels in, 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 in other sectors, but why, why do you think our you know, mortgage industry is, is lag behind those other sectors? Oh, it's a, it, it's a massive question, isn't it? Mm. Um, I think, in general, I, I don't have a specific example related to the sector at the forefront of my mind, but I think in general, people uh, find being vulnerable a difficult, um, almost social conditioned situation to avoid. Uh, mm. And I think the, the breaking that stigma down that being vulnerable can actually be really positively constructive and help you repackage, reprogram, redirect, refocus, all those elements to it. So I think being comfortable with being vulnerable uh, is something that perhaps this sector has 
that's not necessarily embraced as much as other sectors are. I think there's there's undoubtedly an element of um, it, you've got to you've got to have a humility to both ask for help uh, and seek help, and mm-hmm. I think we haven't seen enough people proactively being able to um, request and, and, and seek help comfortably mm-hmm. such that that element of humility, again, doesn't feel so vast for those that perhaps aren't as, as, mm-hmm. as, as together and as strong and as therefore willing to step across a line and say, I think I need a chat about something that's quite mm-hmm. significant. Um, but I think then if I take it in the round, I think we have to face it that society in general just hasn't done a great job. I mean, I'm 56, coming on 57. I've just been on a two-day course and I've learned more in the subject than any of my prior 57 years had taught me. Uh, And, you know, there you go. The the subject matter in its own right has has just never really been out there in, 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 in thoroughly... Um, accessible formats and, yeah. and styles and language that, that allows people to feel comfortable. Yeah, no, I, I get that. And the stigma and the discrimination, I want to come back to in a in a in a minute. But I'm, I'm just wondering again, having done the you know, the two the two day course, I, I'm interested to understand maybe you know, w- was there any kind of information provided in terms of what maybe causes poor mental health and and, and 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 ideas as to you know maybe what should people look out for i i i really enjoyed the course because attendees were all from outside of the finance sector so okay. I, I was hearing real life experiences and examples of things that were in quite quite alien sort of workplace environments to me uh, having been a fs boy for getting on for 30 years yeah um and, and I think that was really invaluable. The list is endless <laughs> mm-hmm. to, to answer your question of what causes it. If you take it in a very fundamental way, um, base principle way, I guess, anxieties and stress is building such that they become overwhelming. Yeah. I think, you know, that that was clear. And some of the mechanisms of, of, of support and early intervention are all about you know that active listening and that active uh, encouragement for people to open up and release from their stress container stuff that is starting to you know overstress and overburden and burn out individuals but i think there are then i think there are then a lot of profound circumstances that that, that will be very individual in, in, in the making of mental health challenges, that could be trauma. That could be trauma from many years ago that's been triggered. That could be trauma from yeah. something very recent. Um, I think it can be then stuff that, as a society, again, we've never been really great at talking about, whether that be money worries, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, I know we've worked in financial services. The sooner you get on top of a money worry that's building and have a plan, the sooner you'll come out the other side intact, both financially and mentally. But the longer you leave it, the bigger it gets, the faster it gets, the tools available become less uh, able to help you see daylight again. You know, there's, there's a stigma still about talking about money worries and 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 that's inextricably linked i'm sure to mental health um but i think to 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 pick the theme of of keeping the conversation going it's also encouraging people to 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 feel able to release tensions stroke secrets stroke things that they are bottling up in a way that they feel safe doing because i think that's the psychological part of of this too that it's fine for us who might feel able to be in control of where we feel on a mental health continuum at any one given point to to Mm. say that's what you should do but the actual act of doing it the person's got to feel really safe before they start 
And what, what about work- into that? Yeah, and what, what about working from home? Uh, how, how have you seen that I- I- impacting? It's such a subject matter that there will be studies galore done on in years to yeah. come. And, and I'm pretty sure that working from home at the moment um, will, there'll be a, an absolute cross-section. There'll be those that have been able to embrace it, really make it work constructively and positively for them. There'll be those that have tried to find the way to make it work but unfortunately, through circumstances, and there's a lot of different circumstances, everyone's home's different, you know. Do, do you have your own personal workspace or do you do it off the side of your, your bed, you know, for argument's sake, which I know some have to do immediately on lockdowns arriving. Um, so therefore, you can't separate work from home very tangibly, yeah. you know. Th- there are all sorts of aspects to this that, again, I think it comes back to it's very personalised. But the key, therefore, is every employer, every employee has to keep connected. Your your coffee roulette, love that, at Crystal. Yeah. I think that's a brilliant way of making sure people still feel attached and part and connected and particularly with it being non-business conversational, able to express and, 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 and share things. But that's that's to your credit that you've created a culture that people feel safe enough. And, and, and that coffee roulette, look, at I think having the opportunity to talk, talk to people within the business that you wouldn't necessarily speak to on a daily basis about anything else other than work, it it, it, it was, it's just great. It just works. And, yeah. and you know, we've got some, you know, some, some, some people who, and we've got a hybrid working environment at the moment, but we've still got some people who um, operate remotely, you know, permanently. Um, and, having the opportunity to have a conversation with them about, um, as I say, anything other than work. It, it, look, it, I just found it really, really interesting and you just wouldn't necessarily speak with them. So that coffee roulette was, you know, was an absolute winner and I'd encourage anybody to, uh, yeah, to, yeah, to, 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 to pick that up and, and, and do that. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, as a guy who works independently pretty much most of the time, if ever I've got a moment where I'm not feeling quite as, up for it as I might do on a normal day. I can't do it with myself, coffee roulette. It's yeah, yeah. quite work. <laughs> but I'll pick, I'll pick the phone up. I'll pick the phone up to someone whose company I enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. And whether we chat a bit of football or whether we chat a bit of whatever it is, I'll just, you know, find the way to just bring myself back into a space where I know I'm ready to, you know, take on the next called the next opportunity to to go and do something valuable hopefully yeah now look i think that's a good tip that and have you, have you got a, a relatively close circle or is it a wide circle that you turn to when you're looking for those positive conversations well i mean you'll know you'll know some of the characters involved because you know we, we, we've got mutual friends in common because of our yeah. time in the space but you know if ever i want uh something slightly lighter hearted i might go towards mr Bernard, for argument's sake, if yeah. uh, if I wanted a little bit of panto entertainment, <laughs> uh, he can always come up with a panto story that regales. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm fortunate because I've been involved in you know a number of different things voluntarily. I've got a big sort of football and cricket network, so if I want to talk about the forthcoming Ashes, I've I've got people in you know one particular part of my phone directory that I can pick up the phone and they, they'll they talk to me about Baz Ball for half an hour if I wish. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I've I, I, I found in, in, in growing into myself and, and, and learning more about how I make working from home predominantly work for me, I've found that network's essential. I, th- yeah. I, 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 I think it's invaluable. Uh, okay. Yes, I happen to live over the road from a amazing pub that still does Bathams at £3.30 a pint. And I do have the opportunity on occasions to just go and have a pint. Mm. And, you know, in, 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 in the old days, I would never have done that. I'd have been in the office at seven, worked till seven. Uh, yeah, then perhaps gone for a pint. But uh, I'd have never have excused myself from a working day because I was feeling just like I needed a little change of perspective and grabbed a beer or grabbed a... Yeah. 
conversation because I'd have felt guilty yeah. at leaving the work that I felt was in front of me to do. And, yeah. you know, wisdom and all that sort of stuff of knowing yourself has just become uh, something that well, the, 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 the course itself suggested was a good thing I'd found. But it, it's, it's something that I think um, we can all help each other to find. Um you know, I, I, I talk quite openly now about the amount of hours, the amount of time I need to spend supporting my mom. Yeah. You know, she, well, sadly, when you get to 57, it by definition means if your parents are still alive, they're a reasonable number. And yeah. she's, she's, she's turned 89 and is, is, is practically housebound, um, but wants to remain at home independently. And we want to, you know, support her with that as much as possible. Um, I think. Even only 10 years ago, Jace, mm. I'd have not really been as comfortable opening up to people that that's something that I I find as a purpose. I don't find it as a, a, as a yeah. challenge. I, I, I framed it very much as this is a priority in my life. I have priorities to candidates. I have priorities to clients, to my wife, to my kids. But I actually have, have, have seen the importance of making sure that I feel good about what my mom's situation can be in a difficult situation actually makes me just feel holistically better full stop. Yeah. So rather than, rather than try and do that from a distance, you know, cathartic moment in the pandemic for me was it's time to move, you know, the, 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 the moment of reflection made it abundantly clear that, our stresses and our stress container were, were were fuller than they should be simply by our location. And we are trying to split ourselves into too many different pieces to do too many different things. Um, and, 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 and moving the location, which is now nearly two years ago has been one of the best things as a family we could have chosen to do. Um, mm. You know, my mom's benefiting, my dad's benefiting, my in-laws are benefiting. I, I'm benefiting though under, you know, without trying to be selfish on it, because I'm much more at ease with mm. that. You called it workplace integration, and it is absolutely workplace integration because it's such an important part of the next yeah. chapter. I was going to say, so, so you've, you've obviously got those. I, I know you work incredibly hard at times, and what you'll do from, you know, what I'm interpreting there is you'll just, you know, each day as it's, you know, the same number of minutes, same number of hours, what you'll do, you'll shape your activities into that day and some of those activities will be work related some of them will be mum related some of them will be other family related and you just work it into that that that, that working day and just give each a, a level of priority and, and 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 that's how I've made working from home and working independently work for me um I've made sure that work isn't my only purpose yeah. I, I I think purpose self-worth um belonging yeah. they're all inextricably linked to the the elements of loneliness and isolation that you can feel particularly if you're working consistently from home and and and, and the best way to i found to, to 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 counter them is to create purpose is to create fulfillment is to create things that um in doing them you know that um the exchange that you've made between doing a piece of work that you might need to do, but can wait a couple of hours, but doing something very purposefully that moves your mom's day, you know, so into such a brighter place than it might be otherwise, actually makes you do better work when you come back to do what you do. Yeah. Be Agreed. You're clearer of you're clearer of mind. You, your lucidity seems to sharpen because you've unpackaged something that just somewhere in your, your maybe even subconscious you're thinking, yeah, mum could do with a bit of time today. Yeah. I, 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 in Nic Nicola Firth of Knowledge Bank, uh, she was the first uh, interview we did in this series, and what I love uh, about Nicola was, you know, she's an incredibly inspirational character and. Um, who if she's having a bad day she gets to the mid part of the afternoon and it's just you know you know, we, we do have you know bad days good days in different days but if she's having a bad day where there's just maybe a, a series of, of bad news and um, 
just call it quits. She'll call it quits for that day, take the dog for a walk, spend time with her with, with, with her husband, and she'll just remove herself out of that situation of 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 um challenge. Um and you know, she'll prioritize the following day the issues that were yeah, were there, but she's doing it probably as you've just intimated there with a clearer mindset and a, a ready to attack a day kind of of mindset so I suppose everybody's got their own different coping mechanisms of of, of, of dealing with uh, dealing with the challenges but just just want to return to what we touched on a little bit early which was about the discrimination and the stigmas that um, uh, you know that we've seen in the past and I think yeah we both agree we can see some green shoes but we still see that discriminatory behavior at times and we still see some stigmas attached to yeah to yeah to, 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 to mental health so how do we overcome that how do we how do we deal with that in in terms of it still being evident i think equality net let, let's use the term equality networks for a moment um i think they're a really powerful move towards recognizing something that again as as, as white males we, we might not in of our corporate lives ever realized we ne we needed was a safe space was a psychologically uh safe environment to unload unpack share learn from e issues that others of similar characteristics are also experiencing and I, I and I don't think necessarily um, because of its intersectionality, mental health needs its own equality network within each business. But I think the arrival of equality networks where people uh, are, are much more able to talk safely is a real, it's a valve on a pressure cooker that, that allows the pressure to um, uh, dis dissipate a little. However, The real challenge, and, and it's the challenge outside of this sector too, in, in, in particularly in bigger corporates, is that they don't become in their own right then isolated and, and, and the, the safety doesn't extend to how, well, how the rest of the business feels, but also how they can then take subject matter out of that environment into environments that, that actually can potentially change you know, policy and mindset in a business. Yeah. Um, and, and I suppose if I sum that up, um, in, in, in perhaps a bit of a harsh way, but I, I, I feel HR in business can do better uh, as a function and, 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 and move, and modern HR functions have moved to this already, but I, I think it can move away from being policy-making areas and policy-upholding areas to actually being really people-centric Mm -hmm. uh, and understanding that, you know, yes, you might work to represent the interests of the business and the line managers in the business as a HR um, uh, individual. However, you also have a undying almost responsibility to the people in the business too. Mm -hmm. And you've got to be very, very clear on who you're serving. And if you're serving only the business and the line manager, I don't think you're creating a safe space because you can't, because they're, mm. they're, they're, they're mutually contradictory on occasions, mm. particularly if the grievance is with the line manager that's building the stress and the anxiety. How mm. do you reconcile that? And mm. I think I think there are lots of those aspects to um, internal politic, internal process and structure that I hopefully get unpicked. But but while they're not fully unpicked and therefore it, it feels fully accessible and safe for all, this keep the conversation going is imperative mm. because those conversations are stilted at, at best in, in, in organizations for fear, for fear of reprisal, which mm. is sad, but 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 really true. Yeah. So what do you think individuals, if they're part of a Unfortunately, the part of an organisation where the you know, the HR department or the you know, the boss is is just unsympathetic to mental health and wellbeing. You know, what, what what can individuals do? 
Well, you know, certainly the power of those networks is is, is the first signpost. But, uh, you know, clearly I appreciate in, in, in smaller businesses, some of those networks don't exist. Um, I think you have to build as an individual, you have to build your network of support. I don't really have an answer better than that because the owner shouldn't be on the employee entirely. It should be mutually uh, beneficial for both parties to work that through. However, I think it's still skewed a little towards the onus is on the employee. And therefore, if I, if I suggest anything, it is build a network around you that one, you can have open and, 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 and healthy conversations about issues that could be stresses, could be anxieties that build, but through experiences and through allyship and through support, be able then to tackle and navigate past what might be a uh, a, a real obstacle and not let that mm. obstacle consume you. Um, and it's amazing how many times just a different set of eyes, a different viewpoint can just help you see a little bit more daylight than you can see if you're trying to process it on your own. Because ultimately, the human mind does take you sometimes to the place that I'm the problem. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that that can then be quite a dangerous spiral that someone can get into. Um, but again, you know, it comes back to the other point, guys. The ownership is also then on the business and the bosses to be better yeah. too. You know, let, let's not point this all at the individual. This is this is a journey that both sides need to drop the fact that there are sides in their own yeah. right and realise that they're all in this for the benefit of each other. Yeah, and you mentioned before one of the coping mechanisms you're to use is you 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 you'd ring Rob um, or you you'd, you'd certainly seek out. Uh, one of your friends who you know is you know, an optimistic person, a positive person. I'm just wondering about other coping mechanisms that maybe you use as, as, as maybe some hints and tips for people who are, uh, yeah. are listening. I think I've always been good at uh, accepting that you don't win everything. And, 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 and if you frame yourself that way, uh, and, and, and you therefore, by managing your own expectation, manage others' expectation better too, you reduce the amount of stress that you build on yourself by understanding that you can't win everything all of the time. If you start on that premise and then work backwards and start to want to win more and therefore process the aspects of what, didn't lead you to win previously or, or whatever emotion caused uh, you to feel as though you didn't quite deliver. One, you've created a learning opportunity for yourself, but two, more importantly, you've given yourself the realism of knowing that um, how you manage others' expectation as well then fits very much with that whole spectrum of I won't win everything I do. You won't necessarily win everything you do. But how do you deal with it when you don't is the actual real, that's the real gold dust in my view. And, 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 and being able to use that gold dust to either improve yourself, upskill yourself, get yourself to redirect and reprioritize. You can get a, you can get a burst and a, and a release from that. Um, but I suppose what I'm saying then in a nutshell is however difficult a, a moment, however traumatic even a moment, those moments have to be unpacked to be able to then identify the opportunity or the daylight that follows them because it always follows. It might feel a longer period away, but it, it, it will come yeah. and you've just got to ha have of mechanisms and tools and, 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 and particular network um, sources that allow you to to, to, to to move to that sort of daylight. I mean, talking of daylight, I love, I love the sunshine. Yeah. I know you, you do too. Um, you know, one of my 
if I if I'm feeling just particularly this is not a great week. Mm-hmm. I can't seem to do anything quite right. I'm trying to take the lessons away from it and redirect my energy and refocus. And I'm you know, trying to balance the other things that I'm doing and get fulfillment out of being a good son for my mom and that sort of stuff. Yeah, all that, all, all of that can work, but, but you can still come back to, oh, this is, this is just a little bit of a, a moment where I, I need a bit of a boost. I'm fortunate enough, I don't have a, a sort of holiday calendar necessarily to have to mm-hmm. go to and ask, can I take four days going somewhere where the sunshine gives me a, a particular bit? And, you know, I, I know that's a bit of a privilege that comes from, you know, a, a, a having financial capacity to do that too. But I suppose what I'm saying is reward yourself. Go, go take yourself to yeah. a good place. Take yeah. yourself to good people go take yourself to things that you really relish and you enjoy doing, but knowing that you've done it by not just running away, but by taking on board the, the, the moments that have caused you to feel a bit more stressed or a bit more anxious or a bit more down um, so that you can just deal with them a little bit better next time. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they'll come, um, cause they'll come again. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 absolutely. And is, is there anything, maybe not necessarily a question I've not asked, but is there anything else? I, I'm going to summarise in a minute because, again, I think you've, you know, there's a load of, of, of golden nuggets in, in there that I just want to just reflect back on just before we close. But is there anything else? I know we spoke about hints and tips. We spoke about the safe space. Is there anything else? Um, yeah, that you'd have that you'd have I'd like to have, have said about you know health and well-being or the charter or um any other hints and tips that you would have liked to have shared that maybe have, have, have not come out yet. So anything else before I, I summarize and uh, share some of those pearls of wisdom. On a very profound level to to, to every parent out there, uh, and or indeed, you know, grandparent and or indeed auntie uncle, um I really do have a major worry over social media and particularly in undeveloped minds that aren't yet able to process and unpack in the way that you know I've said it's taken me 50 odd years to be good enough to be able to compartmentalize things in a way that I don't get particularly stressed or anxious about too much in life um I think those undeveloped minds have got to be really closely monitored and supported through a torrent of social media activities of which there are many highs deliberate highs because they keep you therefore engaged on the platform but there are some you know very very challenging things for a young brain to be trying to contend with and I think if anything as a society we should all rail against um, unfiltered uncontrolled complete social media access for people in their formative years. So mm-hmm. that that's just a, a personal epistle, but one that I know is inextricably, inextricably linked to the suicide of one of the cricketers that I referred to um, that, 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 that still resonates with me. Um, outside of that, I think there's a really simple, there's a really simple way of, 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 of Asking, asking yourself, even if you haven't been on a mental health first aid course, how you can be better equipped to support people who are having some, some mental health challenges. Because let's face it, mental health is with us all, as is physical health. It's just the expressions of where you are on, on, on a continuum that uh, you know, de- define your mood sometimes. Um, I think we've all got to realise that Every single person's situation, particularly when there are so many stresses in life around at the moment, cost of living, crisis, um, division and hatred being espoused by our government, let alone by media. Um, I think we have to be really, really cognizant as human beings, particularly white privileged. And I genuinely believe that that privilege uh, is one to be treated in the way that you should, where you have to recognise that some of the things that you're coping with that you think are stresses and anxieties 
pale into insignificance relative to the stresses and the anxieties of, of, of what others will deal with who are less privileged. But moreover, you don't know that. And in looking at why someone is behaving or, 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 or feeling or showing signs of, it's not because they're weak. That's, that's, that's lazy. That's just completely unacceptable. It's because they have stresses and their anxieties that they aren't really able to, 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 to contend with. Mm. And long story, long ramble way round of saying, you, you can't judge the book by the cover. Yeah. Every yeah. single mental health situation turns on something differently. Yeah. I'm sure of that. Now I've been on the course yeah. and been illuminated greater. And it's digging deep, isn't it? I think uh, asking somebody if they're okay, asking somebody if they, you know, if they feel well, it's quite a superficial question, really. Digging and unravelling the layers that sit below that um, are, uh, are, are a skill, but are often you know, you know, very much needed to really establish how somebody is genuinely... Yeah genuinely feeling and um, listen i want to summarize if, if that's okay Pete, because again i yeah. think you know loads of, of of magic dust in there and look i think in our sector um i don't think there's a, a many people more equipped and, and 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 better skilled at understanding human behavior and human characteristics and um uh than yourself really it's it, it, i know it's your your, your, your day job but and um, i just think you know you're superb at what you're doing and and great what you're doing i think you know a few things for yeah for me to take away um look i'm passionate about that work-life integration that you touched on and um, you know prioritizing those um personal uh, and family related activities that need to take place in a day along with the professional um, elements without feeling guilty um, is, is, is something that um, I feel strongly about. It's, uh, uh, yeah, the work's still going to be there, um, but just making sure those priorities are managed along with your values are absolutely crucial. So I love that, that bit, and we're absolutely aligned on that. The safe space that you mentioned and finding that safe space and, um, the, the importance of having you know, a, a go to you know, go to places is, is crucial and that mutual responsibility that exists with HR and company owners along with the individuals to and um, you know to collaborate together so that you know there's a, a mutually beneficial outcome and and you know no topic should be you know off off limits and that, that again that links perfectly with keep the conversation going and um, I think yeah that that coping mechanism that you touched on around finding positive people to be around finding positive people to have a a, a conversation with is you know it sounds simple um, and conceptual it, it sounds logical but actually doing it when you are feeling quite down is is, is not something everybody everybody does and look and i share and um, finally i share your concern with social media we don't live in this perfect world the benchmarks that are set in that false environment lead to um uh, unnecessary um i suppose benchmarks and unnecessary kind of uh uh, aims and objectives for yeah for these young kids. So I think you know, making sure we're educating, we you know we're, we're speaking you know positively with uh, you know with the kids and the youth of today is absolutely 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 crucial. So listen, I've I've I've, I've loved and really appreciated your time today, Pete. And I'm sure you know, people who listen in will enjoy the enjoy the content. There's some um, you know some pearls of wisdom in there. I think people will be interested to hear and. Um, uh, your views and your opinion on this, you know, un undoubtedly. And look, I'm just dead grateful for you um, being part of the of, of the charter for signing up. Um, it's incredible that you've done that mental first aider course, and and yet haven't got the staff to yet yeah, to put it into practice. But you just shared the the value that comes with yeah, you know, we just having that um, that that first aid you know, um, uh, award behind you. So yeah, that's a, a testament to uh, your commitment to this cause. And look, we've got a movement. We've, we're up to you know 70 plus now in terms of signatories really? and, and growing. We're touching over 10,000 individuals, which is great. And I'm just you know immensely um, you know proud of the fact that you've wanted to yeah you know, to join and be part of this. So thank you for your time today. And um, it's great having you as a as, as a friend. And yeah, I wish you all the best. For
for the rest of the of the year. So thanks for your time, Pete. Thanks, Jay. Thoroughly enjoyed sharing uh, the viewpoint. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Pete. All Cheers. Right. All the best.